In the last couple of videos, I created the ability for the player to shoot projectiles, but they had no impact on the enemies and I need to change that. So in this video, I'm going to be creating all the necessary variables, flow macros, and state transitions to allow our NPC to get shot, lose health, and die. I'll also add in some sound effects and animations to make it a bit more fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I get started with the code, there are a few changes I need to make in the scene view. First thing I need to do is check the tag on the projectile prefab. It looks like in a previous video, I had created a tag called projectile, but forgot to assign it. Whoops. That didn't matter until now, so make sure your projectile has an appropriate tag. Since this is a prefab, make sure to press the apply button to save the changes. Next, I need to add several components to the NPC. The first is a capsule collider. This is going to help determine if the projectile has collided with the NPC. I'm going to move the collider up and change its height to better surround the NPC. I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger to make it easier for the player to hit the enemy, which can make the game more fun, but is ultimately a game design choice. The is trigger toggle also needs to be checked as true. I'm also going to add a rigid body and toggle off gravity while toggling on is kinematic. This will help with collision detection, but not change the behavior or movement of the NPC. Next, I'm going to add an audio source. This is going to play sound effects for when the NPC is hit and when the NPC dies. I'm going to leave the audio clip blank as I'll dynamically assign the clip in the flow macro. I'll also uncheck plan awake as there's no need for that option in this case. With the components added, I need to create two new object variables on the NPC plus one scene variable. The first object variable I'm going to call health and will be of type integer. I'm going to set this to a fairly low value of 15. Lower health makes the NPCs easier to kill and can make the player feel more powerful. The second is a boolean and I'm going to call it is dead. This variable will provide a simple way to track whether the NPC is dead. It's not strictly necessary, but it'll help keep things tidy. The last variable is a scene variable that will control the amount of damage each projectile can do. I'll call this variable bullet damage and it will be of type integer. And I'm gonna set the value to five. The last thing I need to do before getting to the flow graph is update our animator controller to allow for a death animation. Making sure that I've selected the NPC, I'm going to open the animator window. In the project folder for the tiny toony people, there's an animations folder. Inside of that folder is a weapon death animation. I'm going to drag that into the animator controller, like so. Then I'm going to create a transition from the any state entry to the death animation. This will allow the death animation to be played no matter what state the animator is in. I'm also going to create a new parameter of type trigger and call it is dead. Then the transition to the death animation needs to be set to occur only when this trigger is called. Now that's a lot of setup, but I'm finally ready to get going with the code. With all that done, I'm going to create a new flow macro in my macros folder and call it enemy health. I also need to add a flow machine to my NPC and drag the flow graph into the flow machine on the NPC. Once again, since this is a prefab, I need to make sure to press the apply button to save the changes to the prefab. Next, I'll open up the enemy health flow macro. The enemy health macro is only going to run when a projectile collides with the NPC. So I'm going to add an on trigger enter event. Before any real code runs, I want to check if the NPC is dead. So I'm going to drag out the flow from the on trigger enter event to a branch. Then I'm going to drag the is dead variable into the flow macro and connect it to the branch. Next, I need to check if the object that collided with the NPC is actually a projectile. I'm going to do this with a game object compare tag unit and connecting the collider from the on trigger enter event to the game object input node. I'm going to drag the flow from the compare tag unit into another branch and connect the output of the compare tag to the branch as well. Before dealing with the health, I need to add a little more juice. I want to add a sound effect for when the NPC gets hit by a projectile. So what I want to do is have the audio source that we added to the NPC play a short audio clip. Now it's possible that the audio source is already playing a clip, especially if the time between projectiles being fired is less than the length of the audio clip. So I'm going to drag the true flow from the branch out into yet another branch. Then in the fuzzy finder, I'm going to search for audio source is playing, then connect the output of this node to the branch. In the fuzzy finder, I'm going to search for audio source play one shot. Then for my project folders, I'm going to drag in the audio clip called male hurt one and connect it like so. And as usual, I'll add a link to the sound effect asset in the video description below. Now I'm ready to deal with damage and reduce the health of the NPC. What I need to do is get the NPC's health, subtract the bullet damage, and then set the NPC's health to this new value. I'm going to drag the NPC's health variable onto the flow macro as well as a bullet damage variable. I'll drag out the value from the health variable and connect it to a subtract unit. 
it's important that the health variable is connected to the A node of the subtract unit. And next, I'll connect the bullet damage to the B node. I need to set the health variable, so while pressing Alt, I'm going to drag the health variable onto the flow macro to get a set variable unit. Then I'll connect the output of the subtract unit, and finally I'll connect the flow. What I've created so far is sufficient to cause damage to the NPC, but there is no limit to how low the NPC's health can go, and the NPC still doesn't die. I'm going to need one more branch to check if the health is at or below zero, and if it is, then the NPC is dead. If the NPC is dead, we're going to play a death sound effect, set the is dead boolean to true, and stop the nav mesh agent so our dead NPC doesn't keep chasing the player. So dragging the flow out from the set variable unit, I'm going to add yet another branch. In the fuzzy finder, I'm going to search for less or equal and add the unit. I'm going to drag the health variable into the A node and leave the B node as the default value of zero. Then the output of the less or equal unit gets connected to the branch. If the health is less than or equal to zero, then the NPC is dead and a bunch of things need to happen. The first thing I want to do, no surprise, is add a sound effect. In this case, I don't care if the audio source is already playing. If the NPC just died, I want it to play a death sound effect immediately. So I'll drag out the flow from the true node of the branch and add an audio source play one shot. Then I'll drag in the male death two audio clip from my project folders and connect the unit's output to the audio source. I'm going to hold alt and drag in the is dead variable to create a set variable unit and connect the flow like so. Using the fuzzy finder, I'm going to add a bool literal unit set it to true and connect it to the set variable unit. This will then be used by our state macro to move into the death state and play the death animation. The last thing to do in the flow macro is to stop the nav agent so that our newly dead NPC stops chasing the player. To do that, I'm going to drag out the flow and search for nav agent is stopped. Adding that unit, I'm going to make sure the value is set to true. And there you go, the complete flow macro for our enemy health. With that done, it's onto the state macro to add in transitions and a little bit of code. There's a known bug in both state macro that can occur when using the any state entry point, which can allow the state macro to be in more than one state, which is confusing and not what I want to happen. Because of this, I'm going to manually make transitions from each state to the death state. All of these transitions have identical code, so while the bug is a little annoying, it's not a big deal with such a simple state macro. I'm going to start with the transition from the wander state by right clicking on the wander state, and choosing Make Transition from the pop-up menu, and then clicking on the death state to connect the transition. Double-clicking on the icon in the transition, I can add some logic. I want this transition to be checked every frame, so I'll add an update event. Dragging out the flow from the update, I'll add a branch that is going to check if the NPC is dead. Next, I'll drag the isDead variable in and connect the value of the variable to the branch. If the player is in fact dead, then I want the code to trigger the transition. So I'll connect the true flow to the state trigger transition unit. And that's all there is to the transition, nice and easy. Since all the other transitions will be identical, I'm going to copy and paste all the units. Using the breadcrumb navigation at the top left of the flow graph, I'm going to go back to the state macro and add the rest of the transitions and copy in the code for each transition. With all the transitions added, the last thing we need to do is add in the code to call the animator trigger so the death animation will play. Double clicking on the death state, I'm going to remove the on exit event as well as the update event. I won't be needing either one of those. Then I'll drag out the flow from the on enter event and add an animation trigger unit. I'll type is dead into the name of the trigger, which is what we created at the beginning of the video. The spelling is important and is case sensitive. And with that, our NPC can get shot, lose health, and die. Let's press play and see how it works. When the NPC gets hit by a projectile, they make a hurt noise, and when the health reaches zero, the death sound effect will be used for play. You'll also notice that the NPC stops moving as the nav agent has been turned off. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you'll subscribe and join me for my next video, where I'll finally get around to coding up the NPC attack state, which will allow the NPCs to shoot at the player.